All right, hello YouTube. Um, sorry about not posting a video in a while. Um, today I have a, just a couple things to talk about. Uh, actually, it's like three or four, maybe. The first thing I wanted to do was show everyone who cares to, to see it is my vlog setup for my XD4, my Arai XD4. To start off, it is very difficult to put a front center facing mount on an XD4. Uh, there's only one mount that I'm aware of that you don't have to put any kind of semi-permanent or permanent changes to the helmet to mount it. And that is this mount I found on Amazon. It's the only one I can find that is rigid and yet safe and will break off. Uh, there's other ones that use elastic stuff. Tried it, didn't really work out too well. Uh, this is made by Moto Rads or Motor Ads. Probably Moto Rads, I feel. Anyway. Um, it's like a $30 part on Amazon, and uh, what's so great about it is that it uses the same 3M adhesive that GoPro mounts use, except it's a hinging system. So the front center portion goes right on the chin guard, and then these wings, they hinge to match the, the, um, the curvature of the earth, Coriolis effect. No, it matches the uh, curvature of the, the helmet um, to securely mount up there. It's also not so um, rigid and adhered on there that it won't break off in a crash. And I'll talk about that here now. Um, the biggest thing about putting anything on a helmet uh, is that you want to make sure that you don't diminish the way the helmet was built in regards to safety and the way it's supposed to crash. Um, that's why anything other than the adhesive I use here, I use Velcro uh, here and for the battery pack, which I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, essentially what I do with this helmet, and I'll check this out. What I do with the helmet is I, I set this helmet up for, for an all day recording session or just for security and insurance purposes to just record something if something happens. So your standard battery packs won't do that. Um, what you need is this auxiliary battery pack you see on the back. Uh, this one's a, a Mophie one, you can use really any kind you want. And then I use a 90 degree USB cord to nicely bring that down. I wrap it into the helmet pads, uh, kind of spiral in there. Uh, and it connects to what you see is the um, GoPro's proprietary crap uh, mic adapter. Uh, let me rant about that for a second. So GoPro sourced this company to make their, um, their adapters and it has a proprietary uh, encoding or algorithm or whatever the heck you want to call it that you can't replicate it. So you can't find an aftermarket one. The problem is that company uh, went bankrupt or went under or closed up shop. So they are no longer in production as far as I know. Um, so when you go to find them, like I found it, it's about 120 bucks where it should have been $45, whatever. Uh, the GoPro 8 is no, no saving grace either. They still have proprietary crap that you need to add onto the GoPro, which it should be integrated, even if it makes it slightly bigger. Anyway, I digress. Um, so that's really the gist of the helmet. Uh, again, it's Motorads. You can find this mount for uh, motocross style helmets on Amazon. Um, you gotta use a J or an L mount for your GoPro to make sure that it's uh, the angle's good. And then if you want to do an all day kind of thing, battery pack, USB cord to the, uh, what is it, USB mini or micro USB? I don't know, whatever it is. Goes into the uh, proprietary crap adapter into the GoPro. That's the helmet. All right. All right, now, this is the, uh, the home office. I take pride in making sure my home office is pretty rad. Um, I also do a little bit of gaming and video editing for this stuff, as you know. So real quick, let's go over the rig. So the rig, um, <clears throat> let's break it down from top to bottom. Corsair, water-cooled. Inside is a Intel i9-9900K, uh, awesome processor. Uh, the RAM, I have 64 gigs of Dominator RAM. Uh, I used to have this stuff, or I still have it, the Vengeance LPX, really good RAM. You do not need that RAM if you're just gaming. So this is good stuff. I only had 16 gigs, uh, especially with 11 gigs of onboard video memory, which is more than you need. Anyway, 
the reason I upgraded to 64 gigs of higher frequency RAM is for video editing, especially 4K stuff. Um, 4K is very demanding, uh, especially when it's just finalizing the video. Uh, so yeah, it's necessary and also it looks cool, but it's also very expensive for RAM. Then the real heart of this thing, besides the processor, the, <laughs> all right, this is a long name, EVGA GeForce RTX 2080 Ti for the Win 3. All right, so it's a three fan uh, 2080 Ti. It is the best card you can get, uh, aside from going with the water-cooled platforms, but you can also retrofit this to be water-cooled, so really not a big deal. So uh, yeah, that's, that's what I use for doing all this awesomeness. Now here, I use Cyberlink Power Pro or Power Director Suite. Um, what I like about this, here, I'm gonna set you guys here. Uh, what I like about it and why I'm not using something like say Adobe Premiere is I only use about 80% of the capabilities of this program um, and Adobe Premiere is really robust. Uh, I do not have the expertise to do that yet. I will be making these videos cooler and more fancy and little things here and there that you may not even notice, but I'll notice. So I will be switching over eventually uh, when I decide to scale this whole YouTube thing up. But PowerDirector Suite works really well. It does, every video I've, I've done uses this. Adobe Premiere, that will be coming shortly. Uh, I just, the learning curve for that versus this is, there's so much going on with Adobe that uh, I don't have the time to really dive into that until this channel really starts to scale. Uh, no offense, but I do like doing this. I'll do it for fun all the time, no matter what kind of viewings I get or subscribers, that's whatever. Um, but if I'm gonna invest in something else and my time and into something I don't use anywhere else, uh, I need to see some kind of monetary return on this channel before I put that kind of time and money into it. Sometimes my brain is just very financially uh, geared and that's okay too. Now for the uh, the 1290 790 Vegas to Rio race whole discussion and I'm sorry this video is very linear so I will likely have to get rid of the 1290. I'm already prepping it for the sale but the 790 is gonna be crazy so it's the 790R rally and um, it's crazy Google it you'll see uh, there's probably about ten thousand dollars worth of stuff that is above the regular R model, which is already a very off-road uh, version of the 790. Uh, the suspension alone, if you tried to buy it um, and put it on your R, it would run you about eight or nine thousand dollars, maybe seven, between seven and nine. I know that's rough, but at least seven thousand uh, dollars. It does come with an Akrapovich system, which that's a thousand dollars, eight hundred dollars. I probably wouldn't get one, but it comes with it. So whatever, uh, it comes with that. It comes with way better wheels, a narrower rear wheel, narrow, narrower rear wheel. Say that fast. Um, and they're also tubes, so they don't come tubeless like every uh, adventure line from KTM. Uh, these come tubed, so that'll be good. There's also some other things that are added on to it, like the quick shifter, KTM My Ride. Um, it has cruise control, which you can get on any 790, but you gotta pay like 500 bucks plus the service to do it. Routing it, it takes like five hours. It's, it's, it's expensive, from what I've been told. Um, so, anyway, there's about, I, I did the math, there's easily $10,000 of stuff that you would pay to put on your R. Um, and you're getting it at only a little bit more of a premium than the R as it sits. That's what's going on with the 1290 and the 790. I have my deposit down, just waiting every day. I put it out of my brain until it's here. Um, it really will be a dream bike. I have a lot of things I plan on doing to it too. Um, Rottweiler's system, that's a, that's, a, that's a must. When that comes out, I'll be putting that on. Uh, whatever the stage six system is they have. Uh, canister delete and all that good stuff. Um, there will be a rally fairing I'm gonna put on there. Uh, Rebel has one, but then there's also one coming from, I can't even pronounce it, but I, they're, out, they're both outside the US. Um, I'm just gonna debate on which one I'm gonna use, which one will be better. But uh, 
Thanks for listening to my rant if you made it this far. Uh, if you have, go ahead and subscribe. You can see my videos every weekish, monthish, maybe every couple months. That's about it. If you have any questions about my helmet setup, about the system I use, hardware wise, software wise, um, feel free to ask. Otherwise, bye.